Hi there. We're going to go over the hands-on portion of our midterm exam for CIS 195 web development. Provided some directions here, so basically, um, actually also provided an HTML file that was mostly created, so you have to make a few changes to the HTML and then a number of changes to the CSS. By completing all of these changes and these little bullet points here, or call it options, you'll end up making a website that looks like this one. So let's go ahead and take care of this from start to finish. Okay, I provided a zip file with some necessary files. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I will save to my desktop. Right click and extract the file. And I see inside of that I'm, I have a number of things, mostly images. Um, there's a few JPEGs, there's a GIF image, which is a blue button, background for a menu, and the starting page.html. Okay, I'm going to go to my editor of choice, Notepad++, and I will open up from my desktop starting page. There we go. Now I happen to have the uh, printout of the directions handy, so I'll be able to go through those myself, and I'll show you them as I go along through the video too. But the first part of the directions really deal with the HTML file. I need to add my name to the meta author element. I need to add a link tag to reference an external CSS file not yet created. I need to give each of the five divs that contain product info some class, I'm sorry, the same class, and I need to check the HTML for validation errors and fix those errors as needed. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take care of the HTML portion first. So back over to my editor, I'm looking over the HTML file, and I see it's, it's pretty much all set up here. It's a XHTML 1.0 strict document, and it's got a lot of the divs already set up. So one of the first things, add my name to the, to the meta author. There it is. I'll just go ahead and put that in. That's the first bullet. Second bullet, bullet is add a link tag to reference an external CSS file. It's actually already in there for the most part. I just need to put in what's going to be a new CSS file. I'll go ahead and call it phillips.css. I have yet to create it though. Um, give each of the five divs that contain product info the same class. So if I kind of scroll down, I see that there's a div right here for the baking soda product. There's another div for the Coleman camping gear. So I'm just going to go to the div for each of these and I'll put in class equals product. And to make things a little more efficient, I will copy, paste, paste for Hyundai, paste for the single cup coffee, and paste for monster energy drinks. And that's taken care of. And the last bullet for the HTML is check the HTML for validation and to fix errors as needed. Since I have yet to really save this, let me go ahead and do a file save as. I'm going to save to the same location, but I'm going to give it a different file name. I'll call it phillips.html. All right, so that part's taken care of. So now let me go do the validation. I'm going to jump over to my browser and get a new tab here and go to validator.w3.org which is the W3C's provided validator for checking your page for errors. Syntax errors. I'm going to go to validate by file upload, browse for my file, which is on the desktop in my 195 midterm folder. There it is, phillips.html, and check. All right, I don't care about the number of errors. I'm only interested in the first error. And the first error says it's on line 18, on or about line 18. So even if the error messages seem somewhat cryptic, it does point you in the general direction of the mistake. So approximately line 18, document type does not allow element div here, assuming missing body start tag. Hmm. OK, that gives me an idea. So around line 18, let's see what's going on around that div or around that missing body start tag. So I jump back over to my editor, look for line 18. There it is. There's the closing head tag. There's the start of the div, but I never opened up a body tag. So opening body tag. Click Save. Back to the validator. I click the back button, and I'm actually going to recheck scroll down and let's see what the first error is now. Line 38, document type does not allow element H2 or headline 2 here, missing one of object insert delete map button start tag. So something's up on line 38 and it shows me a little sample of that problem right there and I can already see there's an H2 starting tag and I didn't close the tag properly. So line 38, let me go make that fix. Scroll on down, 
There it is, H2. Oh, need a closing H2 tag. Go ahead and save that. Back to the validator, back, and check. What else have we got? Something on line 41. Um, first character delimiter, but oh, this is a really cryptic one. So let me just go to line 41 and just see what's going on there. Okay, here's line 41. And this is where using an editor like Notepad++ or any specific HTML editor that uses color coding is fantastic. Because color coding will often kind of point your attention to where there's a potential problem. For instance, we can see by all these other divs, you know, there's some things that are orange, some things that are green, regular text is white. So basically, my attributes like source, alt, and href are all orange, and the values for them are in green. So when I look down here and I see a lot of green, something's definitely up. So I look around lines 40, 41, and that kind of stuff, 42 perhaps. There's an image tag. There's the green value for it, coleman.jpg. Um, there's the alt attribute. And here we go. Here's a lot of green. Forgot to close it off with a quotation mark. So the value was improperly um, enclosed. Let me save that. Back to the validator. Back. And check. And let's see what else we have on here. Something around line 48, end tag for image omitted, but emit tag no was specified. So line 48, something perhaps to do with my image tag. So let me jump back over to my uh, code. Line 48, there's my image tag. Now, even if at first glance it looks OK, I've got a lot of image tags that seem to be OK. So you could always compare one image tag, here's one on line 40, with the image tag that has the potential problem on line 48. And with XHTML1 strict, we need to make that a self-closing tag. So I just need my little slash right at the end of the image tag. Takes care of that. Save, back to the browser, back and check. And let's see, what else have we got here? Line 62, end tag for element H2, which is not open. Basically, I've got a closing tag for a headline 2, but I never opened a headline 2. And in the little sample, I can see exactly what they're talking about. I've got an H1 starting and then an H2 closing. So back over to my code. Line 62, there it is. I have an H1. I just have to decide, do I want it to be an H1 or an H2? Well, since the, all, the, all the others are headline 2s, I'll be consistent, and I'll make this a headline 2 as well. Save that, back to the validator, back and check. Fantastic. This document was successfully checked as XHTML 1.0 strict. Fantastic. That's what we want. Okay, so that takes care of really the first part of this assignment, or this uh, this test, this hands-on test. Um, added my name, got the link tag to the CSS file, which I have yet to create. Uh, give the five divs all the same class, and I've checked the HTML for validation. Once this is taken care of, technically I'm done with the HTML portion. And then the rest is going to be all CSS related, cascading style sheets. So I'm going to go through each of these bullets and try to make this web page look like this one. Hey, kind of curious how it looks right now. Let me jump over here and I'm going to go ahead and open this up. I'll go to my desktop. 195 midterm. There's Phillips.html. So this is what the page looks like prior to any style at all. Okay, a lot of plain black on black text on white background and of course in the directions with the screen capture we can say that's what it's going to look like when it's all done. So let's get cracking on this style sheet. I'm going to go back over here to my editor and create a new file. File, save as. I'm going to save it to my 195 midterm, just confirming that's in my uh, desktop. 195 midterm, and I'm going to call this one phillips.css. There we go, so that matches up. Remember on the HTML, I did a phillips.css href here. So there we go, so now I'm going to have a CSS file, and now I can start working on the bullet points for the CSS portion.